It's week nine in the NFL. It's a Wednesday afternoon, and this is our regular uh, value plays segment with Doug Upson that we do, where we get his uh, top three plays for the upcoming NFL card each week. I'm Peter Loshak. You're watching SBR videos. Doug Upson, I didn't uh, track how you did last week. How did you do last week? Tell me you had an okay week. Two and one, right? <laughs> well, I, actually, it was a really a weird week in terms of the timing of the picks because I went 1-0-2, oh, as it turns out. I uh, had two pushes uh, with a couple of games, but the if you were patient, uh, like I was, at least in terms of looking for bets, I waited for New Orleans to come off the three, which they did. They, I got them Sunday at minus two. So at least for me personally, I had a winner, you know, to go that direction. But otherwise, the Vikings were the lone winning play in a really uh, kind of an unusual day. Oh, very nice. But I mean, if your record last week was 1-0-2, that, yes. that is fine, Doug Upson. That's absolutely fine. All right, NFL Week 9, what's your uh, first value play for us? My first value play is on the Minnesota Vikings once again. Now, call me stubborn, Peter, but I am not a believer still in the St. Louis Rams, even though I have lost twice here on videos the last couple of weeks with them. I look at these two teams and I see them actually pretty close in terms of the style of play. They like to run the ball and play defense. And, you know, for the most part, you know, they have been involved in relatively close games. But Minnesota has really uh, struck a chord with me, and they know how to finish games, which I think is a big key and why they're 6-0 and against the spread on this, on this current run. And I think that they have the ability to run the ball on St. Louis, and they also have a very good playmaker who's developing in Stephon Diggs. So I really like what they're doing there. Now, props to the Rams for winning three of, the, of their last four games. But now when you get them outside on a not, in a non-division, game uh, excuse me, in a non-division contest they're only three and seven against the spread you know recently they also fit one of my systems this time of year to play against teams which is road teams that have that are off a blowout win of 21 or more points in weeks five to nine are merely 15 and 40 against the spread with the Vikings down from minus three to minus two and a half. I think they're an excellent value here, Peter. Yeah, the Vikings have been uh, clearly undervalued and underestimated by the market uh, all year long. I was thinking this is a tricky game. I was thinking maybe that uh, St. Louis might be a good play on a teaser with such a low total plus two and a half. But uh, you might be right. It might just be the best way to go. Another straight bet on Minnesota, which has been profitable all year long. All right. What's your second value play for us? Doug up some week nine. My second value play is on the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, this upcoming week. Now, it's clearly, clearly evident to any football handicapper that that last week, Ben Roethlisberger really came back one week too early. But, you know, I understand from the Pittsburgh standpoint, it made sense. They're playing a division rival at home, and they're trying to co close the gap with Cincinnati. It was worth a try. It just didn't work out. Now, when you look at Oakland, they've won two in a row. They've looked very sharp. And Pittsburgh then, in turn, has sunk from minus six to more to minus four and a half, also because of losing Le'Veon Bell. Now, when I look at, at what Pittsburgh is doing, they have the potential now with Roethlisberger going to likely improve his health as it goes along to have the most dynamic passing offense in the NFL with their plethora of receivers. I mean, they have some really good guys like Antonio Brown, Artavius Bryant, and tight end Heath Schuler, excuse me, Heath Miller, in this case, I think, will also have a bigger role. Now, the running back D'Angelo Williams is certainly not Bell, but he's more than capable, and he's certainly an above-average back. When I look at Oakland, I see the 31st ranked pass defense in the NFL, and they're 4 and 18 against the spread off an upset as a home underdog. I think the Steelers have definite value this week at home this week. Yeah, this was this is a tricky one because when I looked at this game on Sunday night, the spot clearly favors Pittsburgh big time, big time. But just looking at you know what Oakland has been able to do this year, they're kind of an impressive team and getting so many points. I was actually leaning towards uh, Oakland. I previewed this game with Jeff Cadillac from jeffcadillac.com. He likes Oakland. Now, if you like, if he likes Oakland and you like Pittsburgh, well, let's just leave it at that. All right, Pittsburgh <laughs> is your second value play. Doug Upstone, what's your third value play for NFL Week Nine for us? Now, my third value play is on Denver, and but we we have lost value, but you know it, this is a part of the deal with with the NFL. I wrote the article yesterday, so we're going to go along with it today and stick with them. Now, Andrew Luck, only he knows how injured he really is, but you know he's playing behind a lamentable offensive line. I mean, they're just flat flat out pathetic. But the one thing about Luck that that I have noticed, and I end up looking this up, is that everybody seems so surprised at how he's playing, and there's no question he's playing poorly. But if you go back to his rookie year, he had 27 interceptions and fumbles combined. Last year, he had 24 total. And right now, he's on pace to be at 28. So this really isn't news. It's just his decision-making has really become quite poor playing on a worse football team. 
you know, now I look at Denver, boy, you know, that defense, they just absolutely just, you know, ate up the Packers and Aaron Rodgers had no chance, you know, 77 passing yards. And I really wonder what a jittery Andrew Luck is going to do against this defense, which is number one, the NFL and has uh, a secondary that can cover his uh, receivers like a tarp. So, and I think they're really in a tough position here. Now the Colts have a great record against Denver over the years. I think six and one against the spread at uh, Indianapolis with Luck and the previous quarterback, Peyton Manning. But when you compare how the teams are really playing today, Denver at minus three the other day was a bargain. I think at minus five, I still think there's value there. I'm going with Denver and as a value play here. All right. I certainly right. wouldn't disagree with you. The side in this game scares the crap out of me. I'm definitely not going to be betting it, but I did uh, bet the under pretty big on the opener, 45. I think I uh, really like that one. I certainly wouldn't disagree with you, though, uh, leaning uh, towards Denver. We might see, you know, a similar car carbon copy uh, result of what we saw last week where Denver gets a, a dominant win, covers easily, and the game goes under pretty easily. Doug Upson, three interesting plays for NFL Week 9. Thanks so much.